everyone, and welcome back to Rotten Tomatoes is Wrong. My name is Mark Ellis, joined as always by my co-pilot, really the Han to my Chewbacca, dare I say the Leonardo to my Michelangelo, Jacqueline Coley, <laughs> here once again. How you doing? Yes, because we can make Brian and Remsen, Donatello, and Raphael. We definitely have a lot of Donatellos yeah. behind the scenes here it's at Rotten true. Tomatoes. No, I agree. So good to see you again, sir. It's um, hot. It's July. It's, it's good time. to be seen. It's very hot outside. I am uh, scorching up the YouTubes right now. Uh, thanks to All Things Comedy. The special dropped last week, Alive and Well. And you can check it out if you've not already enjoyed my new hour. Wherever you enjoy stand-up, particularly YouTube, you can just go to All Things Comedy's channel. Which brings us to our guest today and our topic here. Eric Griffin, comedian, actor, host of his podcast, Riffin' with Griffin, also found on the All Things Comedy Network. We're, we're, we're network bros. Yeah, I'm the Rizzoli to your aisles. <laughs> <laughs> the Franklin of my batch, yeah. oh if you my will. God. Are we just going to keep this only on TNT? <laughs> the Kathy uh, to proceed. your Lacey. Wow. <laughs> This is really dangerous wow. having me and EG together for a full yeah. podcast. But yeah. I feel like we have a great topic. And this is one yeah. that, you know, I I've, I always love talking about this movie because this harkens back to, I'm sure, all of our childhoods. But when you think back about the movies that you got as a kid that you got excited to go see, there was a lot of animated fare out there. And then live action crops up and you say, oh, okay, we had a live action Batman, live action Superman. And then 1990 happened and the dawn of a new decade brought us Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 41% rotten mm -hmm. on the tomato meter. 81% with the audience score. So that's the movie that we're going to be asking, folks. Is Rotten Tomatoes wrong? I want to give a shout out to our fan, uh, Steve Iwerman, a uh, member of the Fresh Ketchup crew, who said, I enjoy the episode on Super Mario Brothers from 1993. In sticking with the cartoon video game genre, what about the live action TMNT from 1990? 41% rotten, which I think is criminal. Saw it and loved it as a kid, and it still holds up today. Keep up the good work. We also have uh, Mutant Mayhem, the new Turtles movie, coming out August 2nd. So there's a lot of turtle buzz in the air, yeah. and we figured it's time to get down to brass tacks and talk about this movie, which is not the highest-rated <laughs> Ninja Turtles film. Do you know what the highest-rated Ninja Turtles film is? is Animated it, or live action? Is it Secret of the Use? Animated or live action. It's got to be the one with uh, what's-her-face. I don't know. April O'Neil? No. She's uh, in all of them. No, no, no. The... The one with Megan Fox? Megan Fox. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, neither one of those. Oh. Mm. You have Batman versus the Ninja Turtles. It's an animated movie from 2019, 100%. I don't know how many critics reviewed it, but well, it's 100% yeah. on the tomato well, that's meter. A, that's a mashup. Anytime yeah. you get a mashup, you, you know. I'd say, you, tell you can't have, Alien you can't have Rizzoli Predator. without Isles. <laughs> I think I think Alien versus Predator would beg to differ on that one. No, that one. Oof. That you was were terrible. so excited. And I'm I, so excited for that. Me too. That's, I'm like, that's like they're finally going to do this. That might have been when we met. We, yeah. we, we were probably outside of a comedy club <sighs> talking about this weekend, man. It all goes down. Yeah, because he, because they, that was one of those ones that like it took so long for them to make, but they were teasing it for like Forever. 20 years. You had the Dark like, Horse comics in the yeah. 90s, which yeah. were really good. And like we both love the individual franchises. Mm -hmm. How can that miss? You know what it is? It's sometimes it's uh, this is a great. You'll love this example. Sometimes a movie has a great concept, but they can't, they didn't follow through. You know what's a great example of that in time with Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Okay. Like, like that's Didn't a, think we talk about that today, but here but we are. I'm saying that's a great concept for a movie. It is, yeah. Right? Like it, it could actually be a great HBO, uh, well not HBO, Max show now. Or just Max. Just Max. Whatever. It would be a great show now, you know, or like like Silo on a, Apple TV. It's like a, just a great like little show, but then they just didn't, you know. Yeah, the log I'll, line was there. Yeah, but nothing I'll, else. Yeah. I'll raise you that Olivia Wilde movie that didn't meet expectations with that. "Don't Worry, Darling." The yeah. directed Olivia Wilde movie. That's a great pitch. Okay. That I mean, white women get out. Like that's a pitch. Yeah, that's a pitch. I'd buy it, and mm. I would watch it. And then it did not end up being that. It's really weird. If you <laughs> pitched to anybody in 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 okay, let's go back to like the late eighties and say, okay, hey, my kids love playing with these turtles that, that are toys, and and it's based on comic books. Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird. Uh, I think I want to do a live action version of this. Does the board laugh you out of the room, or do they say, ah, oh, no, maybe we can capitalize on this? You know. <sighs> Are we going to talk about the movie now? We're good. Well, okay, yeah. let me let me ask Cause, you this because I have a lot I have a lot of things to say. God, I love go. I love when a guest comes fully loaded, <laughs> ready I mean, to go. Seriously. Let me simply ask you this: Is mm. Rotten Tomatoes wrong about the forty one percent? 
tomato yeah, meter. Yeah, they're very wrong because it should have been way lower. <laughs> what? <laughs> movie was terrible oh my good <laughs> lord wow. i can't believe this locked and loaded yeah terrible. this is th- th- this but, is turtle slander but i will say this i have the reason i think that i'm saying that is because of like our knowledge now it'd be like looking at that one of those first spider-man movies and i'm not talking about the tommy mcguire mm-hmm. i'm talking about remember when they tried to do captain america spider-man way oh, yeah. way <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> they have like, like Captain an America movie. 89. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And you know, you could see the, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, that's what was up with this movie. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so it was hard to like take off the prism of uh, the what last. What we know now. What we know now. And when you watch that, like to me, like that, that movie should have, could have been called like, you know, Teenage Ninja Turtles, you know, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I like I, like I like if it would have if it was a musical it would have been better you yeah. know what I mean like if they would have all of a sudden started to go doom 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 you know it's <laughs> arguably the best MC <laughs> Hammer soundtrack in movies and yeah. that's said with all due respect to the Adams Family which is also great but yeah. uh, the Adams Family might be a better movie Jacqueline Very but MC so. Hammer came to play did the turtles <laughs> is Rotten Tomatoes wrong it's so interesting too because it goes from MC Hammer. To Vanilla Ice in the next one. In the, it's, in the it's secret like, of the It's like, yeah. really? Wow. What do we do? No, I do think the music definitely hit hard on this. This was so weird, like, looking back on, like, this movie. Just how it opens. It is so built in the, like, scare white people about New York 80s. Like, yeah. it was so <laughs> set in that, like... It was like a bad just, play. You know what I mean? <laughs> Before like, Giuliani it was, got there. I mean, it was just so weird. And what we've come to learn now is, like, so much of that was because of these movies. It wasn't really based on reality mm-hmm. that there was this, like, huge... There was definitely a crime influx in the 80s, but it wasn't... You would have thought that you can't walk down the streets in New York without being stabbed. It and terrified like, <laughs> me. As a kid, <laughs> seeing this movie, yeah. we had and, gotten out of the Air Force and so we were in Virginia when I saw this movie. But, yeah, like, going to New York, like, the opening of this movie is just a bunch of kids pickpocketing back yeah. and forth, and yeah. it turns out they're members of the Foot Clan. But the movie itself, yeah. are, are you happy with 41%? I would say the 41% is an accurate reflection of how bad this movie is at times, but yeah. I had so much fun with it, I can't really call it a 41% movie. And it's still, it's a kid's movie. It. What was weird with it is this back with, <laughs> this is back in a time when kids' movies could be dark. I mean, this is before, I think, even Kindergarten Cop, right? Like, uh, Kindergarten that? Cop was around the same time. I think around, Kindergarten Cop might have gotten there first. but Might have gotten there yeah. first. So this was still around the time where they would still hide, like, kids' movies with mm-hmm. this, like, I mean, look, Secret of the Nim, that thing should have been R-rated. You know what I That's mean? Like, scary. You know, right? Return right? to... Book. Yeah. Return to Oz. This was a part of that time frame where they wanted to scare kids before they Wait, then. You're talking about Oz on HBO? No, or? Return to Oz, the Feruza <laughs> oh, Ball. Okay, yeah, yeah. Feruza Ball. Oz that would be really yeah. yeah. too. So, yeah. so <laughs> Return to Oz. <laughs> it would be the that kid, would be like, so bad. Trying to watch that HBO at night. So yeah, like you're trying to see like a movie that's nudity, but then Oz comes on. It's like, I want no part of whatever. Oh I'm my God. Me. I'm that not is ready so for bad. it. Anyway, so I would say that if for what it is, the 41% is accurate, but I just don't think it's a reflection of what the movie intends could be and who it's for. Well, who it's for, it's an easy 60. I would put it in there. Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes is wrong. This is yeah. a fresh movie. This is a fresh movie, adult or child. Either this is, You can have a ball watching this movie. Yes, you can have Everybody good... comes to play. You it's one of those Great ones. villain, great heroes, great sidekick with Casey Jones and April O'Neil. A little bit of love story there, this some a, intrigue. This is a bad version of Big, big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> I'll take a bad version of Big Trouble in Little China. Like as if Big Trouble in Little Ca- China didn't know what it was. This movie is just another like, oh, you know, was... camp, mad cap adventure type movie. And Blasphemy! This... <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Listen, it like that whole like Little China dark underworld. Like it's the same thing with Total Recall. All of y'all are doing theater camp with sci-fi costumes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And three. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Just I, I, I love what Elias Cotez is doing this. Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes is definitely wrong, but I, I want to say this. I cannot call this a good movie. The cinematography, the acting, the set choices, the plotting. Keep it's, going. It is a trauma-style the movie. Acting. But I dare you to okay. tell me that I didn't live for Toxic Avenger. I got some good okay. stylistic choices that this film made. But we'll talk about that in movie talk. Right now, yeah. Jacqueline, it is your duty to tell us what this movie's about. <laughs> What's the about. synopsis of Teenage Mutant I mean, Ninja is, Turtles? I mean, have you watched an episode of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Because it's pretty much the same. They we open in the 80s of the 1980s, and basically we are trying to find out what is happening in the dark underworld of New York City. We have investigative reporter April O'Neil, who Intrepid. is... Who is on the... Like, <laughs> back when we believed news reporters could actually discover something, yeah. investigative uh-huh. journalist, she is sort of venturing into the dark world and she gets rescued from the Foot Clan by these sort of 
teenage mutant ninja turtles that are living Well, not under- sort of. Yes, not sort of. Well, they are not actually. That's just the name we call them. They don't call themselves teenage mutant ninja oh, turtles. They just right. call themselves turtle freaks kicking ass. <laughs> which <laughs> they are. Were, which they are. Yeah, I mean. Okay. She gets rescued by them, meets all of these various characters, the Foot Clan, which is head up by Shredder. We have their master who was radioactively made just like the rest of them. There was an experiment, the ooze. It turns them into the turtles. Master Splinter, who is a rat, trains them in the way of Taekwondo. They all have various weapons. They are led by Leonardo. And between them, with April O'Neil, they try to bring down Master Shredder. Along the way, we also meet Casey Jones, played by Elias Coteas, who gave us what I would like to call line cook energy before we all understood what that meant. (laughs) This man walked so that Jeremy Allen White in the bear could run, ladies and gentlemen. The same energy. He just has much better Taekwondo skills. I Mad never cat, drew that connection. Ma- Mad Cat something? Adventures in Sue. There are nerds listening right now that are just like, <laughs> I'll keep going. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get like, deeper into this Yeah, world. this is like a nerd 976 <laughs> number. Uh, She's like, do you want me to tell you about the Ninja Turtles, baby? <laughs> Call this hotline. Yeah. It's like. Can you tell me a little bit about Transformers yeah. from 2007, oh, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you know what? I, I, I could continue, but honestly, that's the best ending of that synopsis that I will ever get. It goes downhill from here. Yeah. Watch the movie. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's based on the animated yes, series sl- and the comic books before that. Yeah. And you basically have the good guys are the turtles, the bad guys are Shredder and the Foot Clan. Okay. And um, there's other people. I didn't even get into like the other various characters, but like I said, listen, thank you for that. I'm too embarrassed. <laughs> like the cheeks are red, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, and I am a black woman. I'm going to stop. And that's what really gets to, That's why the nerds are like on. <laughs> uh-huh. All right, uh-huh. They're enjoying it. Um, oh here's God. the thing, though. All right, here's let me put some context to why I feel this movie was, you know, terrible. All right, wait, 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 wait hold on, hold on. Let because me hear we from the critics first. Yeah, oh, the critics. Okay. I want to hear from the critics. These are critics. critics in 1990 when this movie came out. Hit, we're going to hear from the it. critics for our segment, Two Minutes with Tim. Tim Ryan, take it away. Two minutes with Tim. At this point, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are a pop culture institution beloved by several generations of children, including my eight-year-old and his friends. So it's easy to forget that at the time when the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie was released in 1990, there was more than a little concern about the Turtles' influence on kids. The criticism came down to two main issues, the level of violence in the video games and TV series, and the utter ubiquity of the Turtles as pitchmen for products directed at children. And let's face it, there's not nothing to that. The Turtles did get in lots of fights, and they were in a lot of commercials. Of course, kids were substantially less concerned about that stuff than either their parents or newspaper pundits. But it does partially explain why a lot of grown-up film critics were less than enthused about the movie. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is rotten at 41% on the tomato meter with 54 reviews, and it has an 81% audience score. And FYI, rotten it may be, but it's the best-reviewed Ninja Turtles theatrical release to date. So what did the critics have to say? In a rotten review, Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune wrote, The cynicism of the motion picture industry will be apparent to any child who is exposed to the many product plugs for a nationwide pizza delivery company. However, in a fresh review, Richard Harrington of the Washington Post wrote, Truth be told, there's something amusingly surreal in watching these happy-go-lucky, man-sized terps engage in full-scale punch and kickouts with the inevitable villains. The Rotten Tomatoes critics' consensus reads, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is exactly as advertised. One-liners, brawls, and general silliness. Good for the young at heart, irritating for everyone else. So that's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Cowabunga. Thank you, Tim. That was a great recap of how people were feeling in 1990 when the Turtles were a new phenomenon. And full disclosure, before this show, I wanted to do some sort of wardrobe nod to the Turtles. Um, I put this on. This was not my shirt in wardrobe, but this looks like a shirt that any 10-year-old would wear. So I wore a 10-year-old kid shirt. For the show today, and I'm wearing Barbie, so we are really Barbie, and that's from 1990. Your shirt. Oh, fine trading since 1990. Oh, look at that! It's since 19. I mean, this 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 was destined to happen. Serendipitous. Let's get into movie talk. Hit the music, Brian. (laughs) All right, so it feels like Eric has a lot of criticisms belt up about this movie. Before we get to your notes... Uh, what were you and doing in 1990? <laughs> were, were you? I was graduating from high school in 1990. So were you already oh, okay. l- like, oh, the turtles are for kids. I'm an adult now. I was never into the turtles. 
That was, okay. you know, the, I was uh, He-Man, Voltron, Thundercats. There you go. Robotech. That was my thing. Yeah, every every kid has their drop-off yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Mine yeah. were Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So the Turtles were like the last of like the new sort of yeah. phenomenon in a toy that I like I would hang out, like play with. And then the, then the Power Rangers came out and I was like, I think it's time to become uh, an adult. No, I was definitely now. a Power Ranger kid. I was actually past that because I want to say... Ooh. Were you a turtle kid, though? I was a turtle kid, but it's weird because girls are different because we had, like, brats. And you had Barbie. Yeah. I had Barbie longer than I should have. Did I'd... your Barbies ever make out with the Ninja Turtles? No, they made out with Ken's and G.I. Joe's. That's fair. I was about to say, yeah. I was also a G.I. Joe person. Yeah, oh, they, yeah, they yeah, made yeah, out yeah. with G.I. Yeah. Joe's for but sure. But then, you know, they took G.I. Joe off the air because of, it was just a big commercial for... <laughs> The for war, yeah. stuff. Yeah. No, for oh, the, right, right. For, for Desert Storm? Yeah. No, just for, no, it was a commercial for selling products. Yeah. And there's a law about that. Oh, really? So, that they, you can't... so they took G.I. Joe just off the air because of that. <laughs> Really? It's like you're, yeah. you're hitting your you're correct. It on the can nose we get some uh, verification of that? Maybe. I do yeah. know there's a rule about how much you can sell to kids on air. Yes, and it, I think and, it's like and, a timing issue. Like the reruns of G.I. Joe is probably the issue. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? No, it, like, was just, it was just that the whole cartoon was just an advertisement. Advertisement oh, yeah. really? G.I. Joe. Oh, wow. I just remember like, like watching the Turtles on, on the animated show, which is how I came to them. And my my little brother was like, a, like obsessed with the Turtles. So that's kind of how I, I got into them. But like, I just remember watching their lifestyle and thinking, like, that's awesome. Like, if you forget that they're living in a literal sewer for a minute, they did the most they could do with their sort of bachelor pad underground that they had, this subterranean living quarters. Mm -hmm. They got to eat pizza all the time. They put a bunch of ridiculous toppings on pizza, which I tried myself, and the, I, it was really the pizza is probably a, why I, I enjoyed this movie. This. Dude, I, <laughs> I love the turtles, and I was like, they, they, they're cool. They're fun. Michelangelo's a party, dude. Um, and so I, Leonardo was my favorite because he was kind of like the leader, you know, mm. but I was rooting for all of them with the possible exception of Raphael, who I think is a cancer. He's a locker room cancer. Wow. And he, and he literally is the reason why we're going through all of the steps in this movie is because he made a rash decision on his own instead of working inside the infrastructure I, of the team. I couldn't tell you who was who. Raphael is what? the one that has yeah, the size. I told you, it wasn't my... He's, he's got the, like, yeah. you know, the, the thingies that look like this. Like yeah, he's got size. the size. He's basically Antonio Brown. Like, like, he'll play with you for a little bit, and then <laughs> it just completely goes off I, the rails. Okay, I disagree, because I, when we were doing this, I don't know whose episode where I broke down, like, the mythology behind each of the turtles and why they have their weapons. Yeah, right. You do... You can't just have blind soldiers. You do need the one person who is going to be the naysayer in any group because yeah. once out of every 10 times, that's the person that knows. No, that's some shit. Like, it's yeah. right. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just have everyone be like. That's why they were a cohesive group. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I they like balance each other out. He's trying to express out. himself. But at some point, you got to realize we have to stop the shredder and the foot clan before I get my little proclivities out of the way. Yeah, but you also have to way. have a plan. Leonardo's coming up with a and Master Splinter are coming up with a plan. And the, basically, by your logic, you, you why am think, I on an island here? The you uh, you are the should good be on an island because <laughs> nobody is nobody is above somebody yeah. at least testing the tensile strength. I think it's great to have somebody like Raphael in your group because you know, as a leader, if you're going to bring something, you have to get it past this guy because he's not just going to just be the person like everyone else, like Michelangelo to go with it. Look, All right. you, you need that locker room guy sometimes, dude. You're selling me on that a little bit, but I, Raphael puts the teenage in yes. Teenage Mutant Ninja and, Turtles. And he's doing exactly what he should for his age. He's the one that's like really struggling with puberty to keep <laughs> up with the other kids. All right. So, that, but they all form a team. Yeah. And and I think Master Splinter is is marvelous in this movie as the as the Yoda, the Mr. Miyagi, if you will. And I love that there's a backstory between Splinter and Oroko Saki, who turns into mm. Shredder, where they have this like, oh, wait, we knew each other back in Japan when I was a rat practicing my ninja moves in a cage, because that's what rats do. And then he gets a <laughs> mutagen on him and he becomes this like kind of humanoid rat thing. And he can kind of go toe to toe with Shredder as far as like the, the, the mental wits go. But then you need your turtles to defeat Shredder's army and then Shredder, including Tatsu, who's a great number two. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot ag stacked against the turtle boys. What I'll tell you, one of my favorite scenes of this movie, then you guys can, can kill it to bits if you want. I love the scene when we meet Shredder for the first time. Because mm. it's like all the Foot Clan is like this underground, like kind of fight club looking thing. And incidentally, that was the that was the same set that they used 
for Super Mario Brothers, Manhattan Town. Really? Or whatever. Yeah. Of course they did. The introduction of the Shredder is so scary. He walks in and it's like he's doing an HBO stand-up special in like 2001. <laughs> like just this like really cool, hyper stylized, futuristic looking place. And he just gives them this pep talk for the ages. And like they're ready to run through a brick wall for this guy. So that's why I love Ninja Turtles. And Casey Jones kicks a lot of ass. I was gonna say that's gonna be my scene. But who's your what's your favorite moment from it? Do you have a favorite moment? No. Do you have Eric. a moment that you didn't, like, hate it? No, it's just not a good movie. You know? Okay. Well, it's, what? Hard, it's hard for me to watch this movie because, again, context I was trying to give before is, this was 1990. Jurassic Park came out. In 93, yeah. 93. I'm saying, yeah. but that's around the era they were working on. Mm -hmm. So you didn't think that, like, like the vision was fully realized until no. JP hit? No, yeah. I mean, this is like... This looked You're like... You're saying the graphics of it. Yeah. Okay. But I'm trying not to look at it in a sense of like what we look at now, but this was like Sesame Street. <laughs> but this is what's so funny. When you see... You know what I'm when it, you it's see, a fine line. I'll give you that. This is like yeah. Sesame Street. And they're like, oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh. You know, it was just like really bad. And I, and I couldn't get past it. I tried to watch it because it was coming on this. I tried. Yeah. I was like, no. Nah. I can't do this. And acting so bad. Like it doesn't hold up. It you is really the think it was the Henson, taste was bad? Jim Henson's yeah. company did the, did the costumes and stuff. So there is some Muppet Sesame Street connectivity. Well, there you go. Between the look. Yeah. But then when they got rid of Jim Henson, it was awful. So like I hate to say that because I like this one because oh, I got if you've, a story about that. If yeah. you've seen the other ones where they have the mouths moving, yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't even match. At least with this one, there's like real animatronic people trying to make it as realistic as possible. I think I it's know, good. But are I <laughs> He's literally, for those listening, Listen, I'm, pulling yeah, down I'm his pulling eye my, to be like, I, okay, I. I always think of the moment. Like, this is when the world changed. The world changed when that dinosaur came on the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And everything before it that was trying to be anything like that <laughs> ceased to it ceased, it ceased to like you know, exist. It's just like, it's like, nope. Like, right. Like, yeah. I can't. I saw Jurassic Park in the theater nine times. Yeah, mm. it was a it was a formative experience. That moment of that, you know, when everybody's looking and you're just like, what? You know, so now you I can't unknow <laughs> what I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when those turtles came out, I was like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm good. I'm out. I'm out. Wow. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> all I saw was like, you know. I couldn't get past, like, all, all in my mind, I saw it was like, okay, cut. And then it was like, you know, a dude going, whew. Mm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sweaty. Yeah, yeah, just sweaty. And he's like, he's got a cigarette. He's like, <laughs> we're going again? What are we going again? Are we going again? And he, it's not even his voice, because they just, you know, it's just a dude, uh, like some, like, grip. Yeah. <laughs> but there was no attraction to the personalities of nah. the turtles either. I'm trying to tell you, I wasn't a turtle guy. You know, like I said, like I collected comics. So, you know, I was into like, you know, Marvel and mm -hmm. DC stuff. And, you know, like I say, Thundercats, He-Man, uh, Robotech, G.I. Joe. That was my thing. Uh, you know, this was like, I'm like, what? They're turtles? You know, I just, it just, it didn't grab me because I was mm -hmm. at a certain age where I was like, this isn't what you're looking at anymore. No, it's That's for kids. You know what I mean? It's Whatever. also like the age that you saw it probably. Did you watch it in the theater? Um, I don't even remember. I doubt that I did because I wasn't into yeah, 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 yeah. the Ninja Turtles. I did. I was 10 and my brother was 8 and my mom took us and we lost our goddamn minds. Because, of course. Did, but, but here's the thing, though, and it's interesting you bring up like, like when we were growing up in the 90s like because like back then, the comic books and the other sort of media you had, like the animated shows, and even you just playing with your toys, that could take a story so much further than what was capable on screen. Mm -hmm. Right. To the Jurassic Park thing. Our right? imagination. Right. So I think for me, and again, having 10-year-old eyes on it helps, and the fact that I just discovered movie theater nachos the previous year, thanks to <laughs> Batman. Um, eating nachos, and then knowing I'm going to get pizza right after this because the turtles are eating pizza, and then also... Seeing them on screen in live action, I think, was the closest thing to what we would eventually get with Jurassic Park up to that point. And so I think Possibly. that's why I was like, this feels real to me because it's the closest to reality that you could have something like that look back in 1990. Well, when you're mm -hmm. young and like, that's a very important note there. Right. Like, you know, like, because I'll tell you my uh, most influential movie experience. Okay, like my mom comes to me and says, we're going to the movies, right? Okay. And I'm like, I don't want to, she goes, we're going to go see Indiana Jones. Mm. And I'm in, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll never forget this. I'm like, I'm just pouting. <laughs> I'm so upset. I imagine like like little baby Eric, but yeah. he's still got the gray beard and the hat. And, and the, <laughs> <laughs> little baby I'm like, are you kidding? Bed. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm oh, sorry. That <laughs> image is just going to give nightmare fuel. I don't mean to be mad about uh, this, but just imagine a like 50 year old man with like the beard. <laughs> and, little like, baby Herman. Uh, you'd, like that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking of from freaking uh, Roger, Roger Rabbit. Rabbit. Yep. Oh. So I'm like, I didn't want to go. You didn't want to see any of it. I didn't want to see this crap. Yeah. Right? I didn't know who Harrison Ford was. Mm-hmm. It's like, this is a nightmare. I'm with my mom and her friend. Embarrassing. You know, it's embarrassing. And you they want to go for Harrison Ford because he's pretty. Exactly. <laughs> it was that kind of thing. What if my friends see I got to tell you, when, when I left that thing, I wanted a hat, a whip, <laughs> a leather jacket. Hair. And I was running around my house. Dun, 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 dun. And then for a long time, when I was in a, a plane taking off, mm-hmm. I would be looking out the window, and that that music would be in my head. Oh, yeah, wow. the map. Like, yeah. like you're, yes. on, you're on a world atlas yeah, with yeah. The, the red yes. dots and showing so, where you're going. So what I'm saying is, like, that was my... So when I, you know, mm-hmm. so I, I see the turtles, I'm like, that's not Harrison Ford. And then, you know. But it is for little kids. No, no, no. I, I get that. But I'm just telling you my little kid experience. So it's like I have two movie experiences that I let that, that one. And then my mom took me to see Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't even remember seeing Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back. But Return of the Jedi was the first time THX sound was uh mm. that's the first time so we're all in the theater and it's like Ooh, and it's like oh my god you know then mm. especially the beginning of that movie where oh you hear god. Darth Vader breathing and surrounds yeah. dude and then like uh, so again when you watch the um the the anim not the animation but like you know the the production of Star Wars yeah. the production of Indiana Jones and then I see this crap there's no way to follow it, is what That's you're saying. Fair. Yeah, I'm. So, I'm fair. sorry. It's just like you know, it's like you're looking at them. You're like, "That's a suit." I mean, and I was at an age where, "That's a suit." <laughs> It's, you know what I'm saying? This is. Are we at Disneyland? I yeah. You know what I mean? You're at an age where you go like, a, I wonder who's in the Mickey suit. That's I, that's what it was. Did the suits me. bother you as a kid when no, you saw it? No, but I get what you're saying about the suspension of disbelief. I could, and I do believe when <laughs> movies hit you at a certain age, your ability to suspend disbelief yes. is less. I have a feeling after this, you know what you're dealing with right now. If you're like on the, if you like, I feel like everybody has different points in your life where you can see things differently. Yeah. Like you can see things differently if you're uh had kids. Like sure. you can see it through your kids' eyes. Well, you can see things differently if you've been in a love and had your heart broken. The next time you go see a rom com, that stuff hits harder. I think a 20 something year old dude, this movie is just not gonna hit you in a good place. Oh, yeah. like, well, was, what was it? It was 1990. Yeah, so I was like 17, 18. Yeah. Years. I'm, I'm playing you were basketball. Already done. Yeah, you I'm were, done. This, 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 this is what I'm saying. Gonna hit this you, was yeah. not gonna be my it thing. It makes, I'm like, I'm like, you just seem like you could suspend disbelief about some things, but I think check, they check hit you out. at the wrong you were, time. You were me when I, when the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers came on the scene because yeah. to me, that show and then like the movie and like all that other stuff, it just it looked so just corny like, and people in tights, like like barnyard play kind of, you know. Lizzie McGuire. That was when I first realized I had aged out of Disney, by the way. <laughs> the thing I was into way too late was Sailor Moon. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because I was really into Sailor Moon. You go to Comic Con, so you're going to see a lot of people in a Sailor Moon. I stuff. mean, but it was like Sailor Moon back when it was like playing cards and you like bought Sailor Moon, like sort of like Kabuki stuff because that was like the only stuff we could get here. So I like had all right, this like right. Sailor Moon merch. Mm-hmm. Shout out to my friend Annabelle who turned me on to Sailor Moon in <laughs> summer school. There well, you go. You know, it's like I, I often wonder like, it must be so much harder for people to suspend their disbelief now. Mm. Because, because they're spoiled? No, no, no. It's because we are also more aware of things now. Like, mm. when, like I'll tell you, uh, like Superman, DC, when they, when, they, when they started to have this thing where like Superman had a trial and they mm. were like, um, you'd like destroyed the city, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, can we talk about all this destruction? That like that now it's like now when I watch like a Fast and the Furious movie and the inevitable gas truck is mm-hmm. on the freeway, which I don't know why a gas truck is always driving on the freeway during that. <laughs> is is that where your is that where your head and your heart go? Yeah, is to that poor driver. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the gas truck the blows up, same thing. and I'm thinking. So now I start doing like this. I'm counting, doing a chase. I go dead. <laughs> 
dead. <laughs> this dude's dead. Yeah. So and now all the I'll, random people too. So, so now yeah. in my mind, I go like in this last Batman with Robert Patterson. You know, mm-hmm. he goes and chases the penguin. They they, they blew up a freeway. <laughs> <laughs> How, how was the penguin just walking away from that? The cost of human life. You, you know what I mean? So you just go, you, uh, now we go, oh, I can't just suspend my disbelief because you've introduced this into our world. It's like now when you're watching Marvel movies and it's like a Thor movie mm-hmm. and aliens are coming, you're in your mind like, where's Iron Man? <laughs> He's somewhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He can't just, they just looking at the, the the TV, Iron Man looking at the TV like, oh, you got it, Thor. No. Yeah. <laughs> it just it don't work like that anymore. You have introduced a reality into this thing now. He's that on the like, recliner watching yeah. watching KTLA like, I think Thor's got this. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's, yeah. He's just, just, oh, yeah. I'm tired. Pepper, switches. don't even bother with a suit. <laughs> Thor's, <laughs> Thor's got this. So what I'm saying is like, it's like, so that's the kind of thing where you go, you know, Back then, it didn't matter. Like, there is a sort of, like, numbness to violence and things like that that people had before. But the more, like, uh, realistic people that you want to get, it's like, I want to suspend my disbelief, okay? Mm-hmm. It's like, when I go see John Wick, I love John Wick, okay? Yeah. And I, I, I can I believe John Wick can kill 400 people in, in, in you know? He, he kills about 100 or so people a movie. It's good stats. Okay? It's ridiculous. I'm fine with that. But when he falls from a two-story building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And lands on a car. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> okay. Can he beat up ten ninjas? Yes. Okay. Can, can he hit every shot with his gun? I believe it. My, but theory... I don't believe him falling from a two story building and landing on the roof of a car and then getting off of it like this, <sighs> just shaking off some glass. Just shaking off some glass. So what I'm saying is like, all right. So I, you look at the prism of a child looking at that movie. Because, like, you know, when you take a little kid to Disneyland and, and, and the Mickey Mouse character comes over, they're, what, what's in their head? They're just like, oh, my God, it's Mickey. They lose their minds. They lose their minds. But as an adult, you're just looking at this poor idiot. You know what kills it for me? hot-ass suit. When I meet Mickey, or, or, like, when I was a kid and I met Mickey, I, what killed the whole thing for me was I was so excited to, like, meet Mickey. And I think I shook Mickey's hand. And to feel that it was just, like, an adult hand in there, I was like, this is not Mick. Like, yeah. what the hell? Who's yeah. who stole oh, Mickey's yeah, you essence? Do you feel, know what? You do you feel know their what? hands, yeah. But the thing is, you can't unknow that. No, 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 no. It's in so there now. now. Your mind unravels. Yeah. And it's like the curtain, you know, you see that, you're looking for the Wizard of Oz and you're like, oh no. you're Maybe weird, I'm just gullible. I weird. believe it all. I Okay, so here's the thing with the turtles though. And the thing to like, like people getting injured and, and like watching a Fast and Furious yeah. movie. I remember seeing Need for Speed a few years ago. And mm. there's like a thousand cops that die in that movie. And all they're doing is their job chasing after these guys that are speeding. Yeah. And like all the cops are dead. So... But with Ninja Turtles, I think that because I saw that movie when I was 10 years old, and as we know, 10-year-olds are pretty able to, like, you can heal from anything Mm -hmm. when you get injured as a 10. You can jump off the couch. You can jump off a bunk bed. You can do whatever. You can wrestle with your brother in the backyard. You're never going to be seriously injured, it feels like. Don't try this at home, kids. (laughs) And then you have that first injury where you're like, Mark Ellis said I could jump off the couch. Oh, my God. (laughs) That's what the Ninja Turtles taught me that I could do. But I do, because I don't remember any of that stuff that Tim was talking about with, like, the parents being concerned about the violence in Ninja Turtles. I do I don't remember that. The the worst influence I think the Ninja Turtles had on the youth of America was that you can, you can, like, be in shape and do martial arts and eat nothing but pizza. (laughs) Uh, they never saw a, a, a vegetable. Never saw the inside of those turtles' bodies. They also have shells. So, like, are we really trying to figure this out? Like, yeah. the shells alone how fat they makes really them are. like they, they have they, they have pecs and they have abs. Maybe they're so kind fat of. they can't get the <laughs> the shells off. Oh my gosh, I do remember that. And the reason why I remember that was because <laughs> of the sequel. Oh my god, y'all. No, the sequel has great that, pizza. In it. No, but the pizza has a great sequel in it. But it's also less. It's, it doesn't go as hard as the first one. And that was a direct correlation to to the first one being such oh, okay. a hard PG-13, because it is still PG-13, even though it's like a hard you PG-13. You see blood at the end of it, because yes. they, they they basically, they 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 punch Shredder off a building into a garbage disposal thing, and Casey Jones hits the button to, like, shred the Shredder, and so then you see all this blood, yeah. and you're like, whoa, this guy really went through some stuff. And I think It was a little like Temple of Doom, where it's like, I didn't know that we could get that violent with a movie like this. Yeah. I just wanted to mention this, because you mentioned about fa- favorite scenes, is that you mentioned the Splinter sort of intro, but Shredder also has an incredible intro, and no, so— No, I did, was talking about the Shredder I'm intro. I'm talking about the Shredder yeah. intro, sorry. Um, but also— um, 
uh, Casey Jones also has a, a great intro. Great intro. That's what I'm say. I think all of the characters, to a certain degree, and even Splinter, when you first encounter him in the mm -hmm. in the in the sewer, like the way they come into him and how he sort of like gathers them all together after you just witness them yeah. all do this badassery. The fact that they all get in line with uh, Splinter, I think, is also a good thing. I just want to say, I think the movie gets character introductions right because it's the Wild Bunch. You have to make sure it's like the Magnificent Seven. You got to make sure every single character. That's why Raphael is able to do his stupid stuff. Is, you know, I get it. He's necessary. I will say this about the movie. Um, it doesn't showcase turtle health care in the best of lights mm -hmm. because Raph gets into a fight with a bunch of Foot Clan because, again, he's a rogue now and he's on his own. And he gets killed. To, he gets pummeled within like an inch of his life. So the turtle's plan to save Raph isn't like, let's just expose ourselves and take him to a hospital. They take him to some place in like upstate New York. And it's this like old house, and their plan to rehabilitate Raphael is they dump him in a bathtub and hope he wakes up. Yeah. So half the movie is just a dead turtle in the tub, and they're in the other room like playing board games and like practicing martial arts. Yeah. And then eventually Raphael, thank God, wakes back up. Would have been really awkward if he just kicked it right there. The movie I want to see is like you know, it's like it opens up in New York, and it's like. I like this narration you're doing. And then it's like, you know, yeah, you know, interior. <laughs> and then it's, like, and then it's the like, sewer. It's the turtles, like, you know, they're 48. <laughs> You and already sold me. And it's very, it's very much like John Wick. You know, yeah. People come and you guys back in it. Yeah. It was Jesus, God. Like, I can't even get into my... Call <laughs> me like... a Domino's and I'll think about it. Yeah, I heard like, they got an app. Like, I can't even get into my shell. Like, like, they open up a closet, you know, and then the, 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 his wife is like, are you getting... <laughs> you better not be putting that shell on. You better not be putting that shell on Can you again. find my super shell? Yeah. It's like the Incredibles. Exactly. <laughs> Where is my super shell? Oh, my gosh. So then it's like, you know, them like trying to like do it again. That's I mean, the movie you want to see? Yeah, is the, see. That, is is that what Mutant Mayhem is going to be? <laughs> it's yeah. going to be them in, in their middle ages? Yeah. I Just trying to hold down a job? Yeah, because I'm trying to get work. So yeah. I can, I, I can I tell I you're probably not excited for this one. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I, I think the animation looks like. I, I don't like stuff that looks like like super artistic. Is that that we're supposed Like that's going to last about two minutes. We're going to be like, mm. ooh. Then it's going to be like, uh, what is this? <laughs> I mean, I would say I just feel, look. Either his writers or his producers or whatever. I think Seth Rogen at least usually knows how to make a comedy vehicle that is somewhat enjoyable. Well, yeah. That, what was the one? The hot dog one? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, sausage Party. Sausage Party, yeah. Like, Which is, to me, was... I didn't mean to cut you off, but just to me, me, Sausage Party was like a bunch of him and his friends smoking weed. Lots of it. Yeah. Lots of it. And somebody said... What if we made a movie? <laughs> you know, they had like a hot dog right here. It was like, I think this what was if that sausage talked? And then they were like, I bet you I can make that movie. <laughs> it was like trading places. I bet you a dollar. I, yes. can, I bet you a dollar I can make this movie and make it a hit. And they were like, oh, okay, Jeff. You know, and he was like, okay. And they cut to it. They're at the premiere like, yeah, right. We all got to do voices. I can't believe we made this movie. <laughs> I, got I to mean, isn't that half character. the movies that got yeah. produced by like Happy Madison and anything on SNL? Like all of that stuff. It's just. But that one was so yeah. ridiculous. I'm just saying, I think comedians getting stoned saying let's make a movie is half of the well, they don't get, like you, half of you Hollywood comedy. You see comedies. a lot of it get greenlit yeah. as, as much as you used to, which True. is why I was right. happy to see, you know, our, our buddies Burt Kreischer and Sebastian Maniscalco both had I just wish they movies come out. I wish they yeah. would have done better. That, uh, I mean, look, For comic's sake. You top know what I mean? five, I think Machine, like, it, they were within like $100,000 of each other opening weekend, but they did around like five, six million, yeah. and, which is still like an accomplishment because you're not putting, like those movies don't have the budget they used to. So don't, you better look at the budgets of those movies. Is it really? Yeah, yeah they spent like yeah. Really? The 25, machine, 30 the, million the machine was The machine was like 30, 40, yeah. That's how we make our money back. Yeah. Gotta hope for it's it. Blu-ray, well, home I, it's media. It's tough. I mean, if you think about it, being a movie star is tough. Yeah. I mean, Jennifer Lawrence is a legit movie star. I don't she know, can't open it. I don't know how that movie's doing. I don't know how <laughs> sex yeah, on right. screen yeah. does. You don't know this about me, and this is not. This belies what happened earlier. But I am like the resident person around here. If it's smut on screen, I'm the editor that they always like. Let's get Jacqueline's take on it. <laughs> like, there's the comic book guy. There's the sports guy, and then there's me. Of like, is it dirty on screen? She will tell us whether this is actually 
actual smut or something that has an audience. Mm. And that was really disappointing to me that a sex comedy could not do well because of puritanical youth. Like, I am upset <laughs> about this. This is where I'm going to get into my, like, comedian being like, we've gone too far. Well, like, this is where I will get it. And good, and about good it, yeah. for her. Uh, my thing, too, is like, good for her to be like, you know I what? wanted to do this. I want to yeah. do this I'm sure while Amy, she's still good looking. That's I, how it happens. And it should. I think they should show them when they feel. But listen, Jennifer Lawrence, you're right. She did a sex comedy, and it sucks that, like, now that's going to be a cautionary tale for anybody else trying to do one. Well, I mean, I think it's still, I mean, it's the, it, the, the jury's still out, you know? This is going to be, hopefully this is the door opening back up. So I appreciate her doing that. Just the fact because that these like, projects for, got greenlit yes, and fair. the stars yes, yes. wanted to do it. The fair. stars doing yeah. it. So they do it. So now maybe Hollywood's going to go, let's see, how's it doing? Mm -hmm. What's the landscape right now? Because with the cancel culture and this, yeah. like, all this stuff, because it's all fake. It's not real. Mm. Like, like, let me tell you, it's not real. <laughs> all right? And the companies that, say, have a checkered past, mm -hmm. they're overcorrecting the most. Yeah. And, and, and like, in our minds, we're looking at this and we're like, dude, if I can feel the diversity meeting when I'm watching your movie, <laughs> I'm out. So it's like you're driving on the freeway and, like, you, you go off the lane, like, one way and then you overcorrect. Yes, and, yeah, they, and now I'm in the other lane. They always teach you. Yeah. Like, like, Traffic's like, coming, you know. Yeah, well, like, I'm the here pressure. for the sexual overcorrection. I want to yeah. see, like, I was just, like, every ra Terminator, yeah, Terminator we, 2. In the middle of Terminator 2, do you remember this? They like granted, it's a part of the plot that like John Connor has to happen, but they don't gloss over that. We get a full on Sarah Connor re sex scene. Like, That's that was the in, first one. Then the first one. 84, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like they always have an excuse for that. I like that. But last night we got a handshake as the it, romantic moment in the movie that we saw. Yeah, right. It was right, right, a handshake. Yeah. It's like a fist bump, mm. yeah. But, Come on. But, yeah. Yeah, but but I will say I'm not a fan of gratuitous nudity either. No, it's not about that. But but it's like it, to me, it's just like with the people dying. Mm. It has to make sense. Service the story, you know. Like I have a bit about this that I talk about. It's like I because you know what I can't stand is uh, when I see a bra in a love scene. Mm. <laughs> it's it's unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this should be out. It's a love scene. It's, it, you, know, you know why? It's because that's not a realistic moment. Nobody has sex like that. Married people. No. no. <laughs> Nobody has their bra. Nobody has their I'm bra. You know I wouldn't know. So I wouldn't know. But, 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 he's got the ring. <laughs> I know. But, I'm about to say, but I always say at the end of that is like, it's not for the nudity. It's not about me being a pervert. It's mm -hmm. artistic integrity. But listen, I don't actually need to see this. Right. You just. You just don't want to see a bra strap. I just need to believe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that is out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I And I, when you're a kid, <laughs> are you nothing, are you are you are you getting this back to Ninja Turtles? Yes. When you're a kid, none of this matters. When you're a kid, it's just like, oh yeah, right. that turtle suit looks like trash. But it's fine. It's you know, fine. It's fine. Because the turtles' boobs are out. The turtles abs. The turtles whatever, aren't wearing whatever you're into. The turtles aren't I mean? wearing any clothes. Yeah. You, this should be your favorite movie. The turtles aren't wearing clothes you know, when it's when, not a sex When you're 10, you're not like, Dad, Mom, the turtle, where's his yeah. pee pee? And it's like, you know, think about that kind of That's stuff. A, that is a good question that yeah. I you know had what I mean? you know, you know, forgot. You, yeah, you just got I was having also, too much fun. I don't want to forget this. Let's not forget who Donatello is in this movie. Uh oh. Corey Feldman? Corey Feldman, the one and only. Voiced by Corey Feldman. Oh, fun pizza fact <laughs> before we're out of here. So, Pizza Hut. Had a twenty million dollar campaign uh, with Ninja Turtles. I yeah, of bet course they did. did. But it's hilarious with this movie because the pizza featured in the movie is Domino's. Yeah. So they didn't get in the movie, but, but they, they had the marketing around it. Well, that's and it was everywhere. Placement. I we went to Pizza Hut. We bought the uh, the cassette tape yep. coming out of our shelves because that was when you would go to Pizza Hut as a restaurant. It was yeah. like still a restaurant pizza Oof. with a salad bar. And let me tell you how, how great did you guys the, grow up. Here's how yeah. great the Ninja Turtle <laughs> costumes were. Okay. The Ninja Turtle in the movie were so good that I remember my mom told us, like, she saw a TV guy that the Ninja Turtle was going to be on Oprah today. The Ninja oh, Turtle yeah, was going to be on yeah. Oprah. My brother and I are so excited. And she introduced, here come the turtles. And the turtles walk out, and it was different costumes that were not half as good yeah. as the movies. They had like liver spots and stuff Wait, on them. They're not it was, half as good. It, it was bad. <laughs> and my brother was like, like, who what the hell they? is this? This is not a turtle. This is not I was Did they furious. just do a placard with it said turtle across the front and letter? Oh, we were and so mad. Letters? And then ever since then, they don't trust black women. So oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. 
like, wow. there it is. That's what started it right there. Let's get out of here. <laughs> I'm not before saying that Oprah I was in on it, but... my career. Let's, let's get out of here. Before he don't trust I end... black women because of that right Wait, there. Before we get I end up being the smiling woman in a video that goes viral on TikTok. I have some questions. Let's go to our big clothes, Brian. I love all people. <laughs> I love everyone. I wasn't even mad at Oprah. I was mad at the turtles. I'm not saying Oprah was there. Stephanie might have something to do with it, yeah, but not Oprah. Look at, look at, look at this song. Look at it. I just, I'm just going to smile. Much. So when this goes viral, it's just me <laughs> sitting here. Uh, EG, you're always welcome on the show. You're a hilarious yes. comedian, a talented actor who will get naked if the role is right, if the part but requires wants to it. See that. That's I mean, why it'll happen. It's yeah, real. <laughs> it's real. Actually, <laughs> real quick, that's my first season of Workaholics. Um, there was. I'm reading the script, and there is a mm -hmm. thing. Montez walks out of the bathroom naked. <laughs> And I looked at that. I was like, wait, hold on a second. Let me. I mean, I really want to say to this, you act like Workaholics was this. This was it. They... We want to make a movie about the show, about yeah, Office. It's all... Like, it's all like every comedy show ever made is just comedians hit a blood. A lot of it is that, exhale yeah. Yeah, but idea. But they're not making so those So did you anymore. have to be naked on set? That's true. For, my, for, that, for that Yeah, yeah, it was part? like, uh, but they just, I had a thing on it. You had a just, thing? Yeah. The whole like point the... was like the, the rule of D's. Is that when people like people stop you on the street? Are they like is Montez usually the what they what they see? Actually, nowadays because of social media, it's 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 probably fifty fifty. That's good. What's yeah. the other? Well, just social media in general. Yeah, they'll they'll, they'll say, "Oh, Eric Griffin." Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody else will be like, "Well, dude, you know." But, but I mean, are they yeah. listening to the podcast? Is what I'm saying. I just think that when you want to find, if you're a fan of a thing, and, I and see, you're gonna go I look see. for it. Got you. You're gonna it's, immediately you're gonna see the person's name. Got you. That's yeah, just yeah. that's the that's the one. That's one of the positives of social media. Griffin with Griffin. You, know uh, you on tour good. anywhere coming up uh, later when on? When does this come this out? Summer. This will be late July. So. Oh, pff, well, I don't, you got nothing set I, up? I don't, I don't know what's going on <laughs> in late July. <laughs> <laughs> Like this is like 2024. What are we? No, all right. <laughs> you're gonna be around. Jurassic man. Park Nine is coming out. And uh, <laughs> do you have any movies you're excited to see this summer? Like, uh, like you when know the what? year started, what was the movie you're like circling? You're like, that's the one I gotta see. Man, there's nothing. Really? Yeah. I mean, not I, not movies, movies, Oppenheimer, Barbie, nothing. Movies, movies have been so disappointing. Like Oppenheimer, why are we making that? <laughs> to f with people. So, I, don't, I don't know why we're making that. They should make, are they going to make the Hitler, the young years? Is that one going to come out too? <laughs> we're making it it's like, because it's why? coming out the why? same weekend as Barbie. Yeah. And it's a great, it's a great dichotomy of I choice. Just, I just, sometimes not every story needs to be told. But, oh, you, but, wow. but Barbie is, you're fine with Barbie. No, I just, I, even Barbie, like how they, like, are they, uh, we'll find out how they're going to ruin Barbie. Because our, our idea of like, because there was so much controversy surrounding Barbie in the like early 2000s, late 90s. You know what I mean? This like uh, the body, body image yeah. and like, you know, and then it was like, because I love that you have. Yeah. That, I love that. But that that's, cool that's a new thing. Hmm. Yeah. You know, and even if they had like the different color Barbies back in the day, nobody was talking about them. Fair. You know what I mean? They were like, they were in the closet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're seeing it. I think you're seeing it opening weekend. I what? mean, it, you will Barbie? have by the time this podcast yeah. comes out. Yeah. Well, my my wife is probably going to be like, That's we got to go see Barbie. And then on the way there, we're going to be, I'm a Barbie girl. <laughs> well, you can, Barbie you can have the Nicki Minaj <laughs> I Spice version because they redid it. Oh, they did? They did. Ugh. There you go. I don't know if it's, I'm going to like that. Is if it you good? think they were going to make a Barbie movie and Nicki Minaj was not going to get involved in that, come on now. Okay. Are you I'll just you. Uh, Eric Griffin on the socials? Yeah, just at Eric Griffin. Um, yeah. I love I I love movies. Uh, I I talk about movies too on Riffin with Griffin a lot. You know, I'm going to be reviewing The Flash. There you go. Which is probably way past now uh, since this is coming out. In I think given your take on the turtles, people are going to want to tune in to hear yeah. retroactively how you felt about. I the really Flash. do think so. And any other yeah. movie you see, you're always welcome on the show. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, know, you so much yeah. for being here. Like I'm interested to hear what you say about the yeah. Flash now, <laughs> and I'm not interested to hear about what anybody says if about anything. You, we're interested to hear from our fans as well. Our fresh catch up crew. You can email us rt is wrong at rottentomatoes.com. Subscribe, rate, review, whatever your platform of choice asks you to do. Do it for us. Here at Rotten Tomatoes is wrong, and for Riffin with Griffin, Eric Griffin, thank you, the best and one of the best comics you will ever nice. see when he's in your town. Had a good go time. see him, Hilarious. Jacqueline Coley. We have a TBD on our next movie, and so we maybe can make it up. We could just pick anything. I'm going to say we're doing the Secret of the Nim, and Brian has to now. Can I tell you something? I know everything about that movie. I've never actually seen. What? Really? Well, oh, I, I read the movie. books. I, I read, read the books, books too, yeah. I might have to come back for yeah. that one. Yeah. All right. Griffin's <laughs> back for the... Yeah. He'll do the book review. Jack will do the movie. 
And I'll just try my best to steer the ship for the whole gang here at Rotten Tomatoes. I am Mark Ellis saying thank you so long and <clears throat> cowabunga.